Good health is most people's biggest priority. It certainly is for us as a family. As parents, one of the things that changed when our kids were born is that I found less time to exercise and look after myself. But quite early on, I realized it's really important too. So I made a point to carve out a small time every day to exercise. It's not often long, but it's consistent. Most often kids emulate what their parents do. We are, after all, their first role models. My parents were very outdoorsy and my mom continues to be. Rupak and I are too. So hopefully our kids see that and they'll be encouraged to be outdoorsy and sporty and love exercise too. Getting them to eat right isn't as easy, as you probably know. Getting kids to eat well is quite a challenge, but we try that too. On the show today, we meet one of India's biggest fitness icon, John Abraham. I'm a student of fitness. To have a holistic lifestyle, it's like a tripod stand. Good exercise, good food and good sleep. We also met a nutritionist and a young mum who benefited from consulting her. First, you think about your own mental health, physical health. Combine that with good nutrition, then it's a holistic approach. My mantra for most things in life has always been consistency over quantity. And I believe that lack of time should never be a reason for one not to work out. I met a dear friend who's also a superstar and a fitness freak to understand his fitness mantra. Today we have a very, very special guest, a superstar actor, doting son, a great husband, a brilliant producer, avid biker, a football enthusiast, fitness freak, and one of my first ever co-stars in a movie, Saya, and the really, really wonderful, very humble, John Abraham. So thank you, John. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You should have just said fitness freak. Okay, fitness freak. That's it. Okay. The others freak. don't matter really. Yeah. Now that I've started like that, you also have to return the praise at some point. Yeah, but no, I know, but honestly, I love the way you lifted your leg in that yoga pose where I saw it at the Mumbai Marathon. It's fantastic. I think you're super fit and I'm happy to see you after such a long time and looking so happy and blessed mother of two. And you've not aged and that's beautiful. Thank you. And honestly, same to you. I won't say yeah. you're a mother of two, but you really haven't aged. Yeah. If anything, honestly, you seem to be getting fitter and fitter every year and I younger and younger. I said all that to you so you could return that compliment. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. I think this, <laughs> this chat is going to be that. It's no, going like to be Returning the, the compliments. But honestly, John, how do you do it? Because you're super fit. We all know you're into your, you know, fitness. But you travel a lot. You work really hard. You have so many films coming out. So how do you actually take the time out for the fitness and what do you do? I think I'm a student of fitness. I'm just very disciplined about life. And uh, people call me regimental. But on a day off, I sleep by 10 o'clock. Uh, I wake up at 4.30 or 5. And uh, I eat right. I've not had a cheat day in maybe 19 or 20 years now. Really? A lot of people say, you know, you're really not enjoying life. But I think I find a lot of taste in food even without really having to cheat. It's but just a, about finding the right kind of foods. Is there anything that's your like favorite dish? Something your mom makes? You yeah, really my love? mom makes dhansak dal because she's... Parsi and I think that's one of my most uh, favorite dishes and most of the dals that we make in the house don't have oil yeah. and everything is made on a non-stick pan with just one spray of the pan spray. This is really really useful because as you know this is a show for families, parents, women and children and ways in which we can hopefully help. I'm not telling everyone here to go to the gym but you know just wake up early yeah. and go for a walk, just a simple walk then have a healthy breakfast. Yeah. You know, your sugar happens through fruit and this is for all the moms. You know, we yeah. tend to spoil our kids and give them chocolates. But I think uh, fruit is the best way for a child to consume sugar, fructose. Honestly, the saying that we all say, an apple a day keeps okay. the doctor away, it's partially true. That's you why know? I'm dressed in an apple colour. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> no, but also, um, it's interesting that you talk about waking up early because I found after having kids, we wake up really early because of course the kids wake up early. You're a very are... blessed family waking up early. I don't understand people who wake up late. Yeah. There's no space for that. If you're out there waking up late, John <laughs> says you must wake up early. Yeah. Jokes apart, if your work requires you to stay up late, yeah. you need a minimum of at least uh, six to seven hours of sleep, which is very important for your body. Yeah. And uh, to have a holistic and healthy lifestyle, it's like a tripod stand. Good exercise, good food and good sleep. Yeah. Without one, you know, the tripod stand falls. Were you this disciplined as a kid or were you? what were you like as so, a kid? I was an average kid academically. I used to stand sixth or seventh in class yeah. and I loved playing sport. I used to play football every day as a kid. Out of 17 boys, there were seven boys who used to turn brown on the field and I used to lead that pack. I was mischievous. 
the principal once told my mom, John means 24 grey hair in a day. Yeah. Like, That's the stress I used to give, you know. And my dad and mom couldn't like, oh my God, you know, John, enough. I was a bundle of energy. Yeah. And my dad just recently became a, a grandfather for the second time. And the first oh, wow. was a baby girl. And my dad said, thank God for a girl, man. Thank God. Wow, so congratulations. You. You're a proud uncle. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, he said that having two boys in the house is... Is a menace. I have two boys. Yeah, two little so, boys and a husband, so three. And a husband, three. <laughs> a husband's always little, you know. <laughs> One thing I proudly say, and I would love to say this to all parents, is that my father instilled a lot of uh, value systems in me, my father yeah. and my mother. And one of them was being absolutely honest and not cheating anyone. Yeah. And uh, I think that's something my father kept saying when we were growing up. But when we grew up, he stopped saying it, right? Yeah. And I realized that I was my father's son because I realized that I don't deal in black money. Yeah. I don't cheat anyone. I try and do everything honestly. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that I don't do within my value systems. Yeah, and these are all inculcated from a young age. Young so I age. think the onus is on us as parents Absolutely. to give them those right values. And sometimes, honestly, it's quite tough. So I know talking of values, I know your mother and I'm sure your dad as well are very involved in giving back and yeah. uh, helping children who are less privileged. Yeah, my or mom, three times a week, she takes care of children suffering from terminally yeah. ill diseases. And the other two days a week, she takes care of 300 stray dogs. And wow. another two days a week, she goes to the home for the aged wow. and takes care of old people because Tara, young girls your age or younger than you, Come with your parents and I've seen it with my eyes. I saw this guy come with his dad and he said, Dad, you stay here today in the home for the aged. And he said, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll pick you up. He never came back. Really? He never came back. He went off to the US. He never came back. His mm. father passed away. He didn't even come back for the last rites. Oh, no. So I think as a society, I sometimes get worried whether we are losing our value systems. And I'm not saying I'm old school. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think children should be given the independence. But I think it's important to give back to your family and give back to society Absolutely. what they've given you. And that's what I do in my own way. Tara, I'm on yeah. your show. I really don't go around prophesizing about this or talking about this on a social media platform. Yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. I think it's important. You know, like my father says, you know, your character speaks when you do and you don't talk about it. Yeah, but I know you're very yeah. philanthropic and I know yeah. I know about your mom and I think it's amazing the work she does. And in fact, because the show, you know, it has a deeper purpose apart from sitting and chatting, we want to try and help. So there are different NGOs that, you know, through the show we can support, where we can actually auction some furniture or something and raise money for an NGO of your choice. So perhaps if your mom... Yeah. There's an NGO specifically yep. through the hospital or something. We'd really like yeah. to try and help in some way. So I think, John, you know, you sound like you're very ready to become a dad. I am. <laughs> With I'm, all I'm this a, I'm a child. you're giving us as parents. I've got the uh, energy of a child. You have the energy of a child. <laughs> but now, tell us about that. You are married. So are you thinking of uh, kids coming next? We or? haven't thought about it. Right but now, eventually. I'm just concentrating on um, setting my systems right in my workplace. Yeah. You know, I have a football team. Yes. Northeast United FC. It's one thing that I have on my head and I have my production house. Yes. I also am doing films as an actor. Yeah. So there are a lot of things happening right now in my life that are taking a lot of time in my life. Yes. And I need to get those systems right. Once systems are in place, then you can look elsewhere. But right now, it's just about getting those systems right. Okay, but can I just tell you just one thing? As a friend, sometimes you can't plan too much either. You really. can't plan too much, but I think you must have children only if you're ready to be a hands-on parent. Otherwise, don't have children. Yeah, I agree. And I've seen a lot of parents today when they have their children, they have children thinking that their relationship with their spouses will become better. I'm stating facts. Some of them have children because they feel it's natural progression, it's a way of life and you have to have children. My belief is that all the reasons to have children are not necessarily right. You need to have children if you want to have the joy of parenthood yeah. and you want to bring up someone with a lot of love and care. And I believe, again, my choices are very different. The way I look at life is very different. I look at the world as being very populated and I've been told that, but if you have a kid of your own, you'll understand. And I understand that. But I think there's so many underprivileged kids out there that probably need a home, a shelter and a parent, yeah. if not two. Yeah. And I think uh, they need to be provided for. I have to say, I've known you for a very long time, but this chat has actually opened up many new sides to you. Yeah, for so, people who don't know uh, Tara, 
Okay, now She's, don't. Are you making fun of me? No, I'm making fun. I think you're the sweetest, and <laughs> Thank you are you. actually the funniest co-star I've ever worked with. <laughs> You, really? Yeah. Really? Don't and I tell still me. remember, I would never <laughs> oh, no, see no, you on set. Oh no, don't say anything set, embarrassing. And I would wait on set and suddenly oh, no. I'd hear someone say, Hi. <laughs> and I Stop knew, it. I knew, uh, she still does that? <laughs> okay, she still does that. Okay, and I knew Tara I don't do in. anything like that. And everybody on set would do, Hi. I'm you know? a very, <laughs> Stop it. But that was sweet. That was fun. We had a, a yeah, great time. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We did. It was. Oh, it doesn't seem like it was so long yeah. ago. Maybe they'll do a saya too. You never know. That was a lot of fun. But again, coming back to uh, kids and parents, I think we India is probably the most progressive country. We have more than 650 million youngsters below the age of 35. If you define young as below the age of 35, so we we are forced to reckon with. It's about giving direction to the young absolutely to the youth and I think we are in safe hands thank you so yeah. so so much John I can't tell you we've all really really loved listening to you and we're really looking forward to have you back on the show I'll, I'll come. and yeah. also we hope one day soon you'll be coming here as you're anyway a parent because you you yeah. you're fathering so many responsibilities but perhaps one day with a little baby also maybe maybe when you become a grandparent <laughs> I don't know. But thank you, really a yeah, huge yeah. thank you. Thanks, thanks, Tara. Thank, thank you. Being the philanthropist that he is, before leaving, John signed a piece of pepper fry decor for the charity of his choice. Coming up, an informative chat with a nutritionist and a young mum and their tips on holistic living. First, you think about your own mental health, physical health, combine that with good nutrition, then it's a holistic approach. And a glimpse at one of my everyday workout routines. Many people ask me how I was back in my jeans the day our babies were born. In my case, I think consistent exercise, eating right, and perhaps my jeans contributes to high metabolism. So I haven't really had many weighty issues. But I strongly advocate each to their own. Not everyone wants to be back in their jeans, but I do think if you eat right and exercise consistently, it can go a long way in keeping you fit. I personally have never consulted a nutritionist or a dietitian. And quite honestly, I was always a bit skeptical of that. But my husband Rupak, who's equally consistent with his exercise and eating well, has often found it hard to shed those pounds. So he consulted a nutritionist who helped develop an individual holistic plan to get him back in shape. It's done wonders for him. So I decided to investigate. And I met Suman Agarwal and a new mother, Sherry Gomes Gupta, who's benefited from consulting a nutritionist. So today we have two very special guests uh, with us to discuss health, fitness and nutrition. We've got Suman Agarwal, who is a guru of health and fitness and a nutritionist. And you're a mom of three girls. Yes. Thank you so much, Suman, for coming on the show. Thank you, Tara, for calling me. Thank you. And we've got Sherry Gomes Gupta, who is a contributing editor for Vogue. Sherry is a mom of one. And uh, she had actually put on a lot of weight and how she went from being 86 kilos to 61, looks great, super fit, but mm -hmm. all in a healthy way. Do tell us, Sherry, how did so that happen? So, I gained over 20 kilos. Um, that's because I had a lot of issues getting pregnant. So, I was on hormones and stuff. Okay. And uh, for the first two years, I tried on my own. Lost six kilos, but it was a struggle. I didn't realize then that I developed hypothyroid after pregnancy. Okay. And I also was going through this postpartum depression, which again, I didn't realize was happening. Right. And then I got back to full-time work um, when my son was one. And this was at a daily DNA after hours where, yeah. the, you know, the work hours are crazy. Yeah. That's when I decided I needed help. A friend of mine suggested Suman. I went to her and first thing she made me do is get on my blood work. And yeah. that's when we discovered that I had all these issues. And right. honestly, sometimes we struggle because we don't know we have all these medical issues. So yeah. you're trying and trying and trying and then, you know, yeah. nothing works. How did you help Sherry get to where she is. So we worked out a diet which would suit her lifestyle. Yeah. Where she has to, doesn't have to cook too much. She can uh, cook just two basic meals and uh, still be healthy. And the same food she could have fed her husband and kid also. Yeah. So she will tell you more what she did. What I liked about Suman was it did take effort from my part, but it was still easy because I didn't really need to do anything. She basically teaches you how to balance it all. Right. And 
the, the my entire family eats the same food so we're all really healthy speaking of holistic health mm. and nutrition it's not necessarily only the physical exercise and the yeah. food it's also emotional well being right? right so you went through postpartum yeah. depression that held you back when it came to your health and fitness like was it it did because i didn't understand it and this i'm talking about 13 years ago where people didn't really talk about it much here yeah so no one really got it right you know neither my parents nor my husband they just thought like i'm going through this because it's a lifestyle change and but you know it's, it's a, a lot. transition to becoming a new mom correct and yeah. there's a lot more because everything gets heightened yeah all your uh, whatever you're feeling and then you're struggling to lose this weight and you know you're struggling to get your life back and it's crazy let ladies come to me or anyone so i tell them first you have to love your own body just don't think about weight loss first you think about your own mental health physical health and combine that with good nutrition then it's a holistic approach in a city like bombay we don't have much space right what do you do to so exercise i work really far so it's very difficult to go to a class so i've got myself this fitness pan because this really motivates you to get that uh, 10000 going in a day i think you also have to do what works for you yeah, works and your body as i always say i'm no expert but yet this show is hopefully a platform to share stories and also to hopefully bring about positive change is there anything you'd like to say to the audience about how they can work on their nutrition their fitness i would like to say that body is your temple and look after it and keep it healthy fresh happy that's the most important thing do you have any tips for young parents out there who are struggling to give their kids healthy food or struggling to get them to eat well this is a problem which i think every parent faces that how much attention to give to the nutrition and how much attention to actually give it to okay don't eat this and don't eat that like suppose uh, if a child is carrying just uh, noodles in a tiffin now that is just carbs correct but if you add vegetables to it and maybe little moong uh, sprouted moong to it to make it healthier the taste may be the same good right. yeah but that's how to make it nutritious so the child uh, enjoys it too and at the same time gets aware about the health on that note thank you so much for being thank on the show so thank you tara thank you coming up my mantra for most things in life has always been consistency over quantity and i believe that lack of time should never be a reason for one not to work out So all this talk and no walk may make you question my credibility. So I thought I'd show you a glimpse at what I do. Hope you enjoy it. So now my workout is usually very quick. I literally drop our elder son to the school bus and in the time that I have between him going to school and getting the little one ready, I literally just run. My little tip would be that if you're struggling to exercise because you don't have time, don't let that be a reason not to exercise. So on that note, I have to go get the little one ready. So I'm going to stretch Then I'm going to run and uh, I hope you guys can join in the fun. I've been taking part in the Mumbai Marathon in the Dream Run and raising money for causes every year since its inception except the two years I was pregnant. I've always been quite sporty. I think that's thanks to my parents. Often you emulate what you see. So both my parents have always been sporty, outdoorsy. So I've grown up with the sport and the outdoors being a big part of my life, riding horses, tennis, swimming. So I think our kids are also enjoying being outdoorsy and sporty. They love soccer, uh tennis, swimming. And honestly, if I'm truthful, selfishly I also go back to in some ways being a kid and enjoying those sports again too and it's incredible how much you learn from the kids because they just love it and i think then you start saying forget the sleep let's get up and exercise so on that note i'm going to do a little yoga now generally i do yoga in the evenings with my teacher sadeep pandey it's very important to have a teacher or an expert before you do any sport or any new activity so that you make sure you do it right today i'm going to show you guys a few simple asanas including surya namaskar what i find really cute is our kids have started loving doing yoga and often join my class too perhaps a few of you out there will get um, inspired to start yoga too this is something i love doing and i was amazed to see that our 6 year old was doing it too and with great ease 
After stretching, just going to do some simple Surya Namaskar. Now we're going to do Chakrasan. Now you balance out the Chakrasan by doing Halasan. Sarvangasan. Back to Halasan. We're going to do Kapal Bharti where we exhale strongly. Now rub your palms together and gently cup your eyes with your warm palm. Open your eyes behind your palm. Thank you. So on that note, I don't mean to sound preachy, but I do recommend you choose an exercise that you enjoy and food that you and your kids enjoy and that's healthy too. Also, exercising together as a family can be great fun. Our kids' early morning soccer class has become a great family exercise come bonding time. My leg up pose is a favorite with our kids and it seems to have caught John's eye too. I would recommend choose something like that that you enjoy and then exercise and staying healthy can also be a lot of fun. Till we meet again, bye-bye. Next week, we meet one of the most celebrated cricketers of all time, Virat Kohli. My only advice would be never compromise on your passion. You make mistakes and learn from them. Don't be shy of making mistakes. Who talks about the role his parents have played in helping him pursue his passion for cricket. I remember myself always wanting to play cricket and even before that my parents told me that I always wanted someone to throw a ball at me so I can hit it. A powwow with mothers on how much parents should push their kids and how much they should hold back. Parents have to learn to be less anxious. Knowing that the child will find their way, but you have to believe in your child. And a chat with a talented young singer and her parents about their journey of helping her pursue her passion. Out of the classroom stuff is so important to you becoming a holistic human being. <laughs>